Welcome to lesson three of the Porn Conversation Curriculum and Activity Guide. Today, you're going to learn about gender identity and expression. Gender is a feeling and knowing about ourselves. For example, you can feel like a boy, a girl, a mixture of both, or neither. We're taught to be either a boy or a girl from the time we're born, through shopping, public bathrooms, and the sports and hobbies we prefer. The idea that there are only two genders predicts how we're supposed to speak, dress, and behave. But it really doesn't make sense, because we're all unique. Gender is so much more than that. When a baby is born, they're given a sex assigned at birth. This is what you notice on your birth certificate. Female assigned female at birth, if you have a vulva, or male assigned male at birth, if you have a penis, or intersex, if you have a variation of the sexual and reproductive anatomy. Gender identity is different than sex assigned at birth. A person's gender identity is how they feel and what they know about themselves. This is a deep feeling of being a boy, a girl, both, neither, or another gender altogether. Some people's gender identity and their assigned sex match in a common way. However, others do not. For example, there are people who are born with a penis and assigned male at birth, but don't feel like they're male. Or there are people born with a vulva who are assigned female at birth, but know they're not female. Gender is a knowing and a feeling. Some people may not feel like any gender and identify as a gender, while others may feel like all genders. Gender expression and gender identity exist on a spectrum. The word binary means something that's made up of two parts. Think of the word bicycle. It's a thing with two wheels. The gender binary is a way of understanding gender as two clear and opposite groups. Boy, <gasps> girl. Public bathrooms are commonly divided into two groups based on gender, either the boy's bathroom or the girl's bathroom. But think about it. Isn't that kind of strange? Aren't our bodies all doing the same things in the bathroom, regardless of our gender? Why do we need gendered bathrooms to poop and pee? There are genders beyond the boy-girl binary, such as transgender, non-binary, or agender people. This is what it means when we say gender is a spectrum. There are many different gender identities, not just a choice between two options. Now let's go over some gender identities. Cisgender. A person is cisgender when their sex assigned at birth matches their gender identity or how they feel on the inside. For example, a person assigned male at birth that feels like a boy is considered cisgender. Transgender. A person whose sex assigned at birth does not always easily match their gender or how they know and feel about themselves is considered transgender. Non-binary. Those who identify as non-binary express their gender in a way that is not considered typically boy or girl. Gender expansive. People who identify as gender expansive feel that the traditional ways of being a boy or a girl is limiting and not right for them. They show that there are many ways to be a boy, a girl, both, more, or neither. Two-spirit. This describes Aboriginal or other Indigenous people who have two spirits or multiple genders and experiences. A gender. People who don't identify with any particular gender or being genderless are called a gender. No matter what, cisgender, transgender, non binary, and gender expansive people are all human beings that have feelings, thoughts, and experiences. Inclusive. Inclusivity. It's important to recognize that there are differences and similarities between people of all genders. Pronouns are words we use in place of a name. For example, 
he, him, his is a gender specific set of pronouns, which is often associated with men or boys or those who identify as such. She, her, hers is a gender specific set of pronouns that is generally associated with women or girls or those who identify as such. They, them, theirs is often considered a gender neutral set of pronouns, often used for an individual who might not identify with a specific gender. These are just a few examples, but there are many other gender neutral pronouns that exist, like neo pronouns such as z, zer, zers. Pronouns are an integral part of who we are, and sharing your pronouns or asking another person's pronouns not only affirms someone's identity, but it also creates a more inclusive and respectful environment for everyone. Inclusivity again. Inclusivity. People express themselves in many different ways. Gender expression is the way a person presents and communicates their gender. This can be done through clothing, body language, hairstyle, voice, and behaviors, just to name a few. Gender expression is different in many cultures and can change over time. For example, if a boy enjoys having long hair, he may continue cutting it short to fit into the gender role stereotypes that boys generally have short hair. But in some cultures, a boy having long hair is common, celebrated, and considered very masculine. Good. However someone chooses to express their gender is up to them. Many people believe they cannot express the gender that they feel because of the gender binary and the expectations that go with it. Transgender and gender nonconforming people are often targeted for the ways they express themselves. They may find themselves in situations where there's violence, discrimination, victimization, and an overall feeling of just not being safe. Safety is often a concern for people who don't fit into gender role stereotypes. Gender role stereotypes are the expectations that we place on people to identify and express themselves based on the gender binary. You have to act like either a boy or a girl. No. Gender role stereotypes can change over time and from culture to culture. Some of the ways gender role stereotypes are upheld in society range from our physical appearance, personality traits, and the jobs we have. Gender roles are not something that occur naturally within us. They are learned behaviors. And sometimes the pressure from gender roles makes us act in ways that don't feel right. When it comes to behavior, girls are expected to be polite, passive, nurturing, and submissive while boys are expected to be aggressive, insensitive, dominant, and strong. When we don't feel like these stereotypes feel true to us, we can feel a lot of pressure to behave in certain ways based on society's expectations. When someone is bullied or experiences violence because people expect them to act a certain way due to their gender identity, they're experiencing gender-based violence. When we bully or harm others for identifying or expressing their gender, we are not only causing them sadness and hurt for being themselves, we're creating a dangerous environment for everyone. The important thing to remember from this lesson is that there are an unlimited amount of possibilities for different gender identities. You be you. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you check your activity guide for your homework, and we will see you in lesson four.